that the advance of human liberty, the advance of human liberty can only strengthen the cause of world peace. There is one sign the Soviets can make that would be unmistakable, that would advance dramatically the cause of freedom and peace. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Welcome to another edition of Footprints in American History. Today we're going to talk about America Strikes Back. Now, 
you may remember a few videos ago, we did a video about Axis Sally, who was mainly about Mildred Gillers, who was a woman who broadcast to the Allied troops in, from Germany. Also, we talked about another Axis Sally named Rita Zaka. She did it for Italy during the European campaign. And also, if you go a video before that, we talked about Tokyo Rose, which was actually several women. Uh, from Japan that were broadcasting to the Allied soldiers with the purpose of demoralizing them. However, Iva Chiguri, who was an American from Los Angeles, was the main one that got this. Now, in response, the United States had to do something. Obviously, they had to figure out a way that was going to be more effective than simply doing it the way the enemies were doing it. So what the United States did was they created something called Voice of America. Now, they realized if they wanted to have credibility with people who were behind enemy lines that they wanted to broadcast to, they had to be honest. So their goal was to simply tell the truth, even if things were going bad. And when it first started in 1942, things were going very bad in the war. The Japanese were making great progress as far as invading islands. The Germans were having a lot of victories in Europe. It looked bleak, so the United States had to be honest in their reporting through VOA. Now, this all started with the Netherlands in 1927. They began doing shortwave broadcasts to the Far East. From there, by the 1930s, Germany was doing very hostile broadcasts into Austria, and there were a lot of other countries that started doing this. The Russians even picked up on this later on in the future. So they did have success with VOA. However, what happened was by the end of the war, it was looking different. The Allies were winning. It looked like America had this in the bag. So funding became very, very difficult for this. However, just a few years later, they had the Berlin blockade, which led to the Berlin airlift, and a lot of things began changing. The Cold War began, so VOA, started having a new role in this. Now, however, it wasn't just the voice of America. It was also something called Radio Free Europe. Now, this was started in 1950, and it was originally aimed, it was headquartered in Munich, Germany, and it was aimed mainly at Czechoslovakia, but after that, other countries followed suit. And the reason for this was because they wanted to start getting information to people. These people were living under communism and they were very oppressed. So the goal was to help educate people, not only with news from the outside world, but also to tell them what's going on in their own countries because of the dictatorships. So the goal of Radio Free Europe, which was actually, unlike VOA, which was more just funded through Congress, the CIA was actually behind Radio Free Europe. And so when they began doing this, of course, you better believe our enemies took notice. The Soviet Union took notice, a lot of these other countries, so they began jamming the signals, they began doing everything they could, so they had to respond by broadcasting in multiple frequencies, they had to increase the strength of their shortwave and their medium wave signals just to get it, and it was not appreciated. And matter of fact, in 1978, a correspondent from Bulgaria, because Bulgaria was one of the countries we were broadcasting to through Radio Free Europe and also something called Radio Liberty. What happened was is that he was assassinated in London. They took an umbrella, they stabbed him with it, and it inserted some poisonous pellets into his system and it killed him. Also in 1981, the government of Romania sponsored a terrorist attack on the Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty offices Nobody got killed, it did injure several people, and it did cause a million dollars worth of damage to the building. So today, they are still doing the broadcast of Radio Free Europe and Radio, Radio Liberty to a lot of countries. However, it's not the countries that were originally done because of the fall of communism in several of these countries and the breakup of the Soviet Union. So it's more countries like Iran, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, countries like that where they're still broadcasting. Now, VOA, they broadcast also in several languages. However, they're more about American culture and American lifestyle, and they're broadcasting in dozen languages also, dozens of languages, excuse me. My name's Jeff Dial. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like and subscribe to the channel. Please also give, give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and I just want to thank you for your time. Ring the bell for further notices. Fair winds and following seas.